Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Obviously, we have a, a special guest today. And this is this is my buddy, and we're, he's my, my brother from another mother. And uh, he is the reason why I haven't been putting up as much content in the last day or so. So you can blame it all on him. But um, <laughs> um, I, I wanted him to come on here and, and just kind of get his perspective of the things that are going on in the world, maybe how serious we should be taking it. Maybe he's got some tips and ideas along the way. And the reason is, the reason why I'm asking him is because uh, he has, has some significant training and background that the average person does not have. And, and so I, you know, I, I think because of that, it would give a, an insight that many of you would enjoy to hear. So th this is my friend, Luke. And um, Luke, why don't you just kind of tell us what you feel comfortable with, the things sure. that you can legally tell, <laughs> right? No of, your, of your background and and what kind of training and you know where Absolutely. where you've been and what you've done. All right, my name's Luke. I am um, prior service to the United States Army. I was active duty the entire time. I served 42 months overseas. I trained with uh, Fifth Group, Seventh Group, Ninth Group, and Ranger battalions. And I have extensive training with firearms. I'm accredited through several organizations, including the Department of Defense. And I have demolitions and explosives training and a little bit more stuff like Secret Service, like uh, advanced driving techniques and all kinds of stuff that doesn't really help me any too much today, except driving downtown. <laughs> and... Uh, that's what I got to bring to the table. I've been around the world. I've been in about 16 different countries. I spent most of my 20s not in the United States. So yeah. It's... So he's he's done some done some stuff, seen some stuff, been some places, and and because of that, I thought it would be interesting to get a his his you know perspective of what's going on today because you, you hear it from me enough, uh, you hear it from other YouTube channels and. But Luke here, he's, you know, he's done some stuff, and he's he's seen he's seen Iraq when it was in shambles, and uh, you know, in combat and stuff. So I thought it would be a good good, uh, you know, perspective to hear from. So um, I guess one of the first things is is, uh, you know, kind of what's your opinion right now of what's going on? At least from the perspective of is it as bad as people think or maybe is it worse than people? Maybe people aren't taking it seriously. Do you, you know, is this just a, you know, we're just in another cycle of, you right. know, or or do you see this as being kind of the, on that path of, of kind of destruction, collapse, or, you know, very serious issues? I think uh, without doubt, seeing it firsthand, without pointing fingers that we are in the middle of a structured collapse it's not an accident it's not a stock market accident or anything like that um, the food source is being destroyed the availability the the collar that's being put on the trucking the trains everything it's for it to all happen together is is You'd have to have your head in the sand to think that this is all just, you know, happening. Right. Now, the heat wave does kill things, but it doesn't kill 25,000 cattle. Yeah. It's never happened. We're just not the Sahara Desert. Um, my experience with seeing collapses of, of countries as a whole, society included, is usually... Um, it's all been formulated. It's all been structured. When we went into Iraq... We went in with the whole program, and Af Afghanistan was a whole other beast because they don't ha have any structure to destroy, just go after people like the Taliban and stuff like that. But in Iraq, um, you know, we targeted infrastructure, we blew up the bridges, we attacked the palaces, we destroyed the armor, and then we came in with ground troops, and we had special for forces troops on the ground for almost 10 months before the official attack ever happened happened um that is all completely open information now it's on a freedom of information it's already been out so i'm not saying anything that i'm gagged about saying um the british sas u.s special forces and navy seals were doing missions for almost a year before we did all of infrastructure destruction 
but we went in there and and destroyed the air defenses and everything and then we structured it the way we wanted to structure it we built companies to build infrastructure the way we want it to be built and before we went in we knew that they were already um, moving stores of ammunition weapons mm. and and even tanks and anti-aircraft guns big stuff and caches of, of artillery shells anything you can imagine a military having mm -hmm. and they were hiding it in shipping containers all over Iraq all over the place so they knew that it, we were going to show up and they prepared their country the best they could to defend it against us being the uh, great Satan as they call us but mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I think generally I don't think Americans have really woke up I think they would like to say that they're in a lull and say well you know stuff like this has happened but it hasn't happened right. to the United States <clears throat> it has happened before but not to the United States the United States is the one usually doing it right unfortunately there's contracts and agreements that our country has made that they have no position to make to begin with mm -hmm. and when Iraq fell the people in this uh, in the country life went on we don't have electricity all the time, no big deal. We never had it all the time anyways. Mm -hmm. But I personally worked with postdoctorate um, professors from the University of Baghdad. And we're talking about men who had spent the better part of their entire life, 40 years, sometimes 50 years, teaching and being tenured to being interpreters or office workers because... Um, education collapsed in Iraq. It didn't exist anymore. It just was gone. Military structure was gone. Weapons were gone. And it was everyone for themselves. And in that country, we had the Shia and the Sunnis were the two big factions. Mm -hmm. And you had small groups in there. But I think the biggest problem with the United States right now is we went from the Reagan era and Bush era where we had the right and the left. Mm -hmm. To now we have so many factions that it will be a massive vacuum of power. Yeah. And it will be, um, unfortunately history has showed us that it's whoever has the biggest stick, hits the most people, and has yeah. the most people. Um, and that's, that's what I'm worried about. A lot of people aren't prepared to make the hard decisions. Right. There's, there's family. You can't take care of everybody. You can't feed everybody. Right. Especially if they're not going to help themselves. That's just, unfortunately, the truth. There's a lot of people in Iraq died that never had a bullet hit them or an explosion near them. They just starved to death or were left to their own, and they didn't know how to function. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if everything collapses in the next six months, I mean, I doubt it's almost impossible for most people to get medications that they need right for three months more than three months right. so if you after three months um you know right now i think the united states population has something like 88 percent of the population is on a monthly medicine of some yeah, sort it's a lot i do know that um and ammunition and weapons isn't the only thing we need we need to have our heart ready yep. because it's going to be heart-wrenching um seeing children women innocent bystanders who are just a victim of violence and the chaos because that's all there is after there's a vacuum power or a power vacuum should i say there's just chaos left mm -hmm. and what you need after that is someone who's strong enough to come in and structure it and bring order to the chaos and it just doesn't exist in the united states anymore as a yeah. whole um, yeah, there's there's very there's really no real leadership no, in the country. I mean, there's no. the people that are in charge, but they're not right. real leaders. Right. The people in suits on Washington Hill sign letters and stamp things, but when it comes down to bullets, beans, and Bibles, uh, I mean, you know, you got thirty million dollars in cash. Oh, the economy collapsed. You don't have nothing now. Right. Doesn't mean anything. You have a lot of weird toilet paper. But uh, the people who can sustain themselves, who can hunt, who can provide, 
they're going to be it's going to go back to one of the old systems mm -hmm. and i hate to say that but i it can either go to the old city state systems where people will group together and stabilize an area or it can go to the mad max vigilanteism i mean we look at even we look at iraq we go a little bit farther we look and see what happened with vietnam we look at what happened with uh, Europe, I mean, many, many Europe countries, just everything just didn't exist anymore overnight. Right. New, you know, everything you had currency was gone. Everything you had was mm -hmm. gone. And and they hunted down the intellectual. So, um, I think having such a fractionated base yeah. in the United States, I think there's there's a lot of people coming to realization like, maybe this isn't just a hiccup mm -hmm. you know maybe a lot of people unfortunately are hoping that we'll get somebody in office that's going to fix the problems yeah. but right now even if we got the best you know if reagan came back everyone mm -hmm. thinks reagan's the best and i'm not saying he's not but if we had the very best president he would at the very least be essentially holding the rock above everyone's head while they escape they yeah. would, you know, like in Goonies, they yeah. wouldn't. There is no saving this at this point unless everyone cooperates. And history showed us that that does not happen. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, you know, I, I get people often saying that. Well, you know, I think that there's still a chance. There's still a chance this can be turned around. I mean, yeah, technically there is still a chance. You right. Know, a, you know, miracle from heaven, or like you said, everyone just kind of wakes up and realizes we need to turn the ship around. But the odds of those things happening exactly. are pretty slim, I think, at this point. I very, think, you know. very slim. And it, you can still hold out hope in your heart that, you know, America's not going to collapse, it's not going to fail, but you'd be foolish to not make preparations, to get your Absolutely. Your, 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 your mindset ready for that. Right, you know, absolutely. Kind of like I've been saying on here frequently lately, you know, embrace the suck. You know, it's, get, that embrace is a saying it. in the forces that... Yeah. Um, you got to train like you fight. So yep. if you're not if you're not getting ready, you know if it's too hot and you want to go in the air and cool off, you're not ready. Yeah. If if you're eating food out of a can and sleeping without the lights on, there's a lot of preparation you can do that doesn't require a lot of tactical gear. Yeah. You know the mindsets. You know one thing we did in when I first started training. As I was like, why are we low crawling across football fields, you know, 300 yards, 400 yards? Why are we low crawling? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And then as I came up in the ranks, I realized it wasn't like we need you to be really good at low crawling. We need you to be really good at saying, this sucks. Can I please have another? And mm -hmm. that's that's what it comes down to is yeah. because humans are creatures of comfort, 1,000%. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the problem is... America has become the creature of comfort. Absolutely. We've had more luxury in, in America in the last 50 years than any civilization. You know, the average American who can barely make ends meet lives better than any of the kings yeah. of old, by yeah. hands down. You yeah, know, absolutely. Would you rather have somebody fanning you with a, a leaf or sitting in an air-conditioned house that stays 70 degrees? Mm -hmm. Okay, they didn't have that. I can tell you one thing, though, is... And it's it's hard to say because I love this country. I love my brothers, and I'm, when I say brothers, I mean anybody in this country that loves America. I love you. Um, I have that love in my heart from God, not from me. Believe me, I was a very bitter person for a time because you can't experience that type of chaos and not be changed by it. And that's what worries me the most: is could I do it again? A hundred percent. And a lot of people like you, my brother, I think we can do it. But to see my children, my wife, my family, you know, knowing what I've seen and knowing what will happen. Right. Um, I tell them all the time how much I love them. Whether they want to listen to me or not, that's fine. <laughs> but there's going to be, you know, when we have society collapses and going back to um, even the times of Rome... The, the, the loss of life is... Yeah. massive yeah. we're talking we're not talking about 30 40 percent we're talking 
fifty percent, sixty percent. Um, and that's, you know, Rome, we've had the military fighting everybody for power, generals fighting for power, and everybody else just being crushed in between. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a massive power grab that will take place, and refusing to, to, uh, and refusing to uh, participate in that is just giving up your power. So what I tell people is the you know, the Constitution was absolutely had the hand of God behind it because there's no man that can make a document so thorough. Right. I know the the government has a problem with that because the, the Constitution isn't to tell us what we can do; it's to tell the government what they can't do. Right. And um, the Constitution was made with clauses and effects that we know that if. You know, when they wrote it, they said maybe this will last 50 to 80 years. Mm -hmm. So we've done pretty good with making it last. But it was meant so that this would happen because they knew the heart of man, that corruption would come, it would come from within, and the empire would fall as we know it. Right. We're not an empire. I mean, we are now. Yeah, we are now. We are now. You can't have bases in 80% of the right. in the world and not be an empire. Right. But... Um, there is a chance for a new republic to emerge from the ashes, but it does. We're going to have to have people that have their heart in it and their mind in it to say, "I'm willing to lose everything, including my life and my fortune, mm -hmm. to preserve this great republic." As as me and my brothers have, and a lot of my family who's went to far off lands and never came back, yeah. and the people, you know. Not to be stereotyped, you know, to watch your best friends that you lived, showered, ate, walked with, leave this world for that cause, willingly. No one was drafted. But the problem is, so many people have come, become comfortable and expect things. Yeah. And the only thing you can expect is misery yeah. and chaos, unfortunately. Yeah, I had a friend years ago... I, I I met him in my late teens, and I knew him through uh, about 30 years old. So, mm -hmm. um, and he was a, a retired army colonel, and <clears throat> you know, tough tough old guy. Oh yeah. And he told me one day we were sitting talking, and I mean, of course, this is almost this is 20 years ago. You know, think of how things were 20 years ago. A lot better than they are today. At least we we think they a different were. world. Right. He was telling me. He said, you know what? He said, I tell you what's wrong with this world today. He says, I tell you where we went wrong and what, what would fix it. And I said, well, what, what do you mean? He said, he said, air conditioning. He said, the invention of air conditioning in homes. He said, it ruined America. He said, if we got rid of air conditioning, he said, people would have to go out and actually work. They'd have to suffer a little bit. They'd have to, he said, when I was a kid, he said, we didn't have air, we didn't know what air conditioning was. Mm -hmm. He said, we, we suff, you know, suffered through the heat. He said, we ended up getting along. He says, and he was kind of jokingly saying this because he, he said, you know, he said, we're, we've just become too soft as yeah, a nation. We've, we've gotten too much. Mm -hmm. You know, he grew up, uh, you know, an old, a farmer, you know, a farm kid and, and worked his way up to being a colonel. Mm -hmm. And that's what he retired as. And he, he said, we've, we're just, we're too soft. He said, we, we once were a nation of warriors and a nation of just people that could could do things that, you just couldn't imagine them. If you look at America's history, and America has done a lot of bad things, you know, a lot of things that we're not proud of, but we've made accomplishments in such a short amount of time, mm -hmm. you know, and then here we are in just the last, you know, few decades. Squandered it. It's, we've just squandered it, and especially in just the last few years. Absolutely. Uh, the things that are, that are normalized and accepted Five, ten years ago, the average American, they would have been shocked to, to hear or see that. I just think about when I was in the service to now, and I mean, to think the way we are now is abysmal to me. Yeah. I, I would never believe if you could go back to 20-something-year-old Luke and tell him the world that his children would be inheriting... I don't know if I would come back to the world. I think I might have just crawled up in some holler somewhere in the backwoods of America and disappeared because it's it's frightening how fast mm -hmm. you know we've watched the republic decline. And the problem was 
the main thing and uh, air conditioners were a good thing but they did weaken us yeah you know when you think about powerful entities you know even in the military we like we have units and then they have the spartan emblem or the roman gladiator and all mm -hmm. this these were people who from a very young age they would make suffer yeah so when it came time they were like oh my gosh your army's undefeated and now we have an army that I served in that's you know compares strength to having two moms, which right i I can't even fathom mm -hmm. you know general Patton is is doing cartwheels in his grave Absolutely. right now strong if you have a weak army, the nation is weak if right. if enemies if wolves lions any of these creatures perceive weakness, they hundred percent will attack that weakness. Yep. Because they don't want to have to work extra hard for their food. Right. And right now, as much as other countries are in trouble, and I don't want to point the finger at Russia and say this is Putin's fault or, because it's our fault, mm -hmm. but these other countries that are giving us a run for their money all these decades are now seeing the weakest, pathetic form yes. of America that's ever existed. I mean, we went from fighting the one world empire, England, mm -hmm. with some help, we went from fighting them and conquering and to the point where no one dared hurt an American citizen because right. they knew killing one American citizen could you know, have a team of special forces guys Absolutely. come in and disappear you to them flying jets by our planes, by our ships, by shooting missiles over our allies, laughing at us, and... We really have no one to blame but ourselves for it. Right. Horrible yeah. decisions made yeah. through the years. I agree. And, you know, we were talking this morning when we were walking. It, it's not just... And I try to get this point across all the time on the channel. It's not just about military training. Mm -hmm. It's not just about physical work. It's not just about you know mental it's it's spiritual it's all of it Absolutely. because the the tests and the trials that i believe and i know you believe that that we are going to face sorry for the squeaky door there's children coming in wanting to watch us uh but i the, the things that i believe that that we are going to face spiritually physically mentally it's i don't think probably any american really can fully understand what that's going to be like and and that the, the the strength that we need mm -hmm. not just physical strength not just you know brute you know being able to go out there and run through the jungle with you know full you know oh, yeah. gear and all. I'm not just talking about that I mm -hmm. mean those kind of strengths are definitely going to be helpful but just the strengths to be able to 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 withstand you know mentally withstand the oh, enemy, yeah. the, the psychological stuff I mean we've seen the, just in the last few decades the level of psychological operations that's that they're doing on the American people mm -hmm. and it just keeps getting worse and worse and it's going to the spiritual warfare that's out there the spiritual warfare that's happening right now yeah a lot of people don't want to talk about and that. it's going to just get worse I yeah. mean that's not going to get better right and in the the amount that the the level of toughness that we need and and when we're grit. saying this that grit we're saying this we're, we're not necessarily and I'm pretty sure you agree we're not necessarily meaning everyone's got to look like Rambo no. I mean, you may be seventy-year-old grandma in your home, no. and you can be tough too. Yeah, you may not be able to do physically do the things that we do, but you can have a spiritual and mental toughness that a, a young person couldn't even dream of having. Um, and that's that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you know, yes, you need all of it. Um, Definitely, the world, the, the direction we're headed. Um, I mean. Even if you just look in the just the recent few years of, of other countries that's gone through collapses, you know Venezuela and Sri Lanka and a right. uh, uh, you know, few others, um, and it was devastating for those countries. And, and they were still nowhere is. nowhere to where we that's were. That's it. It still is devastating, but they were nowhere near to, near the top. Right. And you know the old saying: the bigger they are, the harder they fall. 100%. That's going to be true with America. Yeah. And it, it's going to be devastating, not just for us, but the whole world. Yeah. When you go from the United States in World War II having you know, 89% of Americans growing most of their own food and mm -hmm. people having knowledge of the, to right. being able to do stuff. They weren't so much worried about having a degree. And even the people I knew, like I've talked to you about uncles and stuff that I've had that had multiple degrees, and you would never think about it because they were the most redneck people you'd ever meet. Right. 
But the strength we're talking about, and I can speak to, is when you go through selection for any of these tier two, tier three, and especially, you know, the the stuff that you don't volunteer to try out for, the stuff they come for you, they're there's plenty of huge guys that I'm like, whoa, I don't know if I could take that guy. And he's one of the first guys ringing the bell and he's gone. Mm -hmm. And then there's the guys who, uh, it's all about the long game, okay? Just like anything else, if you had to eat an elephant, you don't go up there and just start gnashing on it because it's going to turn around and smash you. Right. You have to cut a little sliver off and eat it. And every day, and eventually won't have a leg, they won't be able to hurt you no more, and then you eat the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But... You have to be able to say, when you wake up, I can tell you, because I had people that helped me get trained up physically, but there's no one can train you here. You have to take the initiative. Mm -hmm. You have to tell yourself over and over, today is suck. It's going to suck all day. And not to bring yourself down, because you can't bring yourself down. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, say, it's going to suck today. I'm thankful that God is going to give me the strength to endure. Yes. And not only that, you have to realize that today will be over at some point, And you can either be ahead or you can have lost ground. And that's it. Every day you wake up, you're hurting more, you're hungry. As this gets worse and worse, there will be untold millions dying because they don't know how to feed themselves if they can't go to Walmart and buy food. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people that can't afford it. There's going to be people that just there's nothing to buy. And the cities are going to become uh, flypaper. There's going to be dead everywhere. Mm -hmm. It happens every every time there's something like this happens in history. The yeah. cities are decimated. Why do you think we don't go out and excavate the country of Rome? We excavate the cities because they were laid desolate. Mm -hmm. And they were the most advanced. England nearly suffered the same thing, but actually cut its limbs off, lost its empire, but it didn't die. Right. And, I mean, you see England's power now. Right. They're, uh, they're the Ottoman for the United States, if anything. Right. And they're, even their currency now, like the British the pound. sterling, the pound, it yeah. was, it's, it's awful. Yeah. Compared to, and it used to, I, mean, I can remember when I was a kid, it was the standard. Yeah. You know, now it's not even as almost as valuable as the, the dollar. It's doing bad. Yeah, when you start taking away money and start using fiat currency, that's what happens. Yeah. When you start letting hands slip hands, that's mm -hmm. what happens. But back to the main point. The main point is go out there and do some push-ups. Don't say a number. Say, I'm not going to stop until I can't do it no more. Yeah. If you're going to go out and do anything, you have to have the mindset of, I have to do the very best I can with what I have. Yeah. If you're an old fat guy, don't be an old fat guy. Don't sit around. Don't eat chips. Start eating healthy. Start drinking a lot of water. Even this horrible word that starts with an F, and I'm not saying what you're thinking. I'm saying fasting. Fasting is amazing. Mm -hmm. It heals the body. Your body yeah. has a chance to heal without having to process food all the time. And... There's a reason why we have MREs. You know, if we only eat once every 24 hours, which that's a lot. I, I can tell you there's weeks where I ate twice, two meals in, in a week. Happened all the time. But we didn't think about, oh, I'm hungry. We're like nutrition. And we would just shove it down our throat, slam some water, and keep on going. Food and drinking was a, a hindrance to us. Right. Sleeping was a hindrance to us. We didn't want to do it. We had missions. We had so many missions. And you have so many missions. Your mission is to survive. And if you can survive, help your make sure your family can survive. And if you get to that point, help your neighbors survive. Because if you think people say, well, I'm a lone wolf. Well, you should look that up because lone wolves have been ejected from the, the group and have been left to die on their own because wolves aren't very good hunters on their own. Mm -hmm. And so saying you're a lone wolf says, I'm going to go die by myself. To me, that doesn't mean you're hard or anything like that. To, to go out on your own and only have to worry about you is the easiest thing to do. Right. Right? If I didn't have children, I would absolutely go live in a cave. It's nice and cool. Have some <laughs> MREs. I'd be fine. I can live two, three months on one case of MREs. I know I can. But I have children. And I don't want to see them starve. And I certainly don't want them to have to go through anything that I've had to go through. For God's sakes. I mean, I don't wish that on anybody. But... You have to know that this is like anything else that's worth having. You have to get up. You have to lift those mental dart dumbbells every day. Every day. 
you go out to chop wood you know obviously you're not going to split six seven cords of wood in one day if you are please give me your phone number but that's not going to happen right you're not going to go out and say i'm not in physical shape but today i'm going to put on some gear and hike 30 miles mm -hmm. no just like i said with the elephant you're going to say i'm going to carry a bottle of water i'm going to walk until i start getting tired then i'm going to turn off brown and eventually if you just keep doing that the main thing the military teaches you is not you have to do this you have to do this it's you can do it it right. is possible your body can do way way oh, more yes. than this does that's why you have to do and that's why we have in the military we have this esprit de corps mm -hmm. we have these models <coughs> we say them together we get each other pumped up because you're psyching yourself out on a good on a good way you're right. not lying to yourself because there's stuff that i did in the service i can't even i'm like man i can't believe i did some of that stuff that's crazy mm -hmm. but i did it and i loved it i was never scared because yep. i wanted it and the same thing has to go to you you can look at this problem that's coming to us like a tsunami. Now, if we all hold hands together, are we going to stop the tsunami? No. It would definitely crush us into the shoreline and kill everybody. But if you say, hey, there's a tsunami coming, come up here, maybe a few people will come. And if you, just like a chain reaction, if you can get enough people to do that, hey, this is happening, mm -hmm. right? This is happening. If anybody thinks watching this that there's not going to be a catastrophic event in the United States in the next short time period, I'm not going to put a month span on it, you don't know history. You don't. It's going to happen. I mean, no one expected the Great Depression, and it happened literally overnight. Yeah. And we don't have 80, 70% of the people growing their own food. I would say it's probably less than 30% know how to grow food, and they're probably not even doing it. Right hunting and i don't mean just shooting a deer because it's going to in in times like that people hear gunshots they know you've got something and they're going to come looking for it you need to know how to trap but without have to worry all that you can just raise animals you right. can grow crops you can fish you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on fishing gear mm -hmm. like you would a rifle and ammunition you should have a rifle and ammunition i'm not saying that you should absolutely have shotgun pistol rifle stuff like that you need to have that because you're an american and if at the very least you need to be able to stand up to tyranny and right. tyranny is coming to us in a way we haven't seen absolutely. in over 200 years absolutely yeah i agree absolutely thank you brother absolutely anytime any any other final words because this is good stuff i think that most people have an inner strength that they haven't tapped into and you need to learn to tap into it mm -hmm. you need to make yourself suffer i don't mean cutting yourself or something goofy like that i mean you need to go out there and push your body to its limits you need yep. to push your mind to its limits right you need to learn to not lose your calm mm -hmm. start with small things with children very easy to do to lose your calm if especially you have uh you know a small platoon like i do <laughs> it's true but you need you need to learn to push all those boundaries above two and three and four and keep on going and don't stop going. That's how we build, like I said, stern selection processes for different things. It's not the biggest guy with muscles because I can promise you, you can go to any selection group I've ever been to and the five biggest guys that could bench press me have never made it. Right. Never. Yep. Never. Because they got the muscles, but they didn't bring this. Yep. That's true. Right? And if you just bring this, you're going to be in a bad way if you didn't bring this. But you're going to be doing better because you're saying, you know what, I'm going to push through this. And that's what they look for, when, whether you're going for seals. And I can't speak to that. I was never a seal. But I know a lot of Green Berets, and I did a lot of work with special operations. And I can tell you, the guys that are in there aren't always as barrel-chested as we are. There's a lot of us. But there's a lot of guys, and they just have the mentality of, I'm going to get up. I'm going to drink a hot glass of suck, and I'm going to ask for a, uh, some orange juice on the side. That's just You just have to have the mentality of, yeah. I'm going to make it through this regardless of what happens. Yeah. When, just something I have done pretty much my whole adult life. Um, I do it around here all the time, and it's almost like a game I play with myself mm -hmm. you know, in, the, in my mind. And I, I call it, you know, I set micro goals. Like if I'm, if I'm out mowing, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm getting to that point, like I need a break. 
You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm starting to get tired. I, I need to take a break. Well, I set a little goal. Okay, well, I can make it 10 more minutes. Oh, know? yeah. Or if I'm, you know, working in the garden weeding, you know, I'm, I'm on my hands and knees and I'm weeding the garden. And I, I get to a point, well, I need to stop. Well, I can I can do two more rows. You oh, know? yeah. And so I'm, I'm constantly setting these, these little, and yeah. a lot of them are just micro goals, you know, when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm out walking in the morning, mm -hmm. a lot of times I, I can walk a little faster pace, you know, I can, I can push myself a little bit further, you know, I can, uh, you know, and when I, and it's usually when I start to get to that point, uh, when I'm working that I'm, I'm starting to get tired, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm walking or if I'm mowing or whatever, you're like, man, I need a break. I'm, I'm getting out of breath. Or right. I need a drink of water. I'm like, I, I can go just a little bit further. Absolutely. And I've done that my whole life. And, and I would encourage you to do that. You know, when you're doing stuff and you get to that kind of breaking point mm -hmm. where you feel like, you know, I can't walk, take another step. I, I, I can't do so. I can't do it anymore. Take another step. Take five steps. That is 100%. You know, and, then, and then take your break, mm -hmm. you know. But, but it, a lot, lot of it, it's not just the physical training. Right. It's the mental training. 100%. It's telling you, it, it's your mind like... You know, you just told yourself, I can't take another step. I'm going to collapse if I take one more step. You and then will. you take five more steps. Wow. I, I, I could take, go a little bit further. And so do that. And, and you're right. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll create a toughness in you. And it doesn't matter. You can, like you said, you can be a Navy SEAL. You can be, you know, grandma sitting there knitting. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you do those kinds of things and you create a toughness. And so when you go through something... You know, the human body and mind, you know, I believe the Father created it in a way that, you know, things that we don't even realize what we can oh, do yeah. with it. Absolutely. And and there are there are there's so much that the human body and mind can go through. And as long as you, you know, tell yourself, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna quit. I'm not gonna fail. I'm gonna push, 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 push. Um, I think the things that we're going through, a lot of people can survive it if they just if they do that. And then, of course, the third thing, the most important, is mm -hmm. the relationship with the Father. Absolutely, you know, that's that's above all because it doesn't. It, you, the, the other stuff doesn't matter. No atheist. It doesn't in the matter. Box, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My grandpa always say that all the time. And it, it, it doesn't matter if you don't have Father, you know, God, Creator, and Yeshua on your side. Right. Then it doesn't matter if you do any of the other stuff because it's all in vain, anyways. Yep. So entity and vexation. Yep. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm glad, um, glad to be here. I will let you know in the future. He, he's, we've been talking, and he's wanting to start his own YouTube channel. And so if he does that, uh, I will be sure and let you know. Uh, and so you guys can jump over there and sign up. It's something that he's he's been throwing around, I believe, is thinking about doing his own thing. Yeah. So And, and when that happens, I'll let you know. But, man, brother, thank you for, Absolutely. Thank you for talking thank to you us. Thank you for having me. All right, folks. Remember, get your houses in order. Prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.